So, uh, if you'd like to learn a bit about mobile GPUs and optimizing for mobile, please come and uh, listen to a series of short talks. Um, we'll have three 10 minute talks. First one looking at mobile GPUs, what makes them different, how to optimize for them. Uh, second one looking at optimization principles for mobile. And the third one looking at the new memory tagging extension for device security application uh, fault detection. Uh, so first one uh, will be me talking about uh, introduction to ARM GPUs uh, for mobile game developers. And the goal for this one really is to outline how mobile GPUs work, we're kind of tile-based, why do we do that, and what does that mean in terms of the content that you're creating for your games. So this is the kind of stereotypical GPU pipeline that you would see if you read the graphics spec. So natural pipeline, triangles in one end, oh, triangles and verts in one end, the data stays on chip after vertex shading, so it goes into a FIFO inside the GPU. Triangles can go straight into fragment processing, and then completed pixels drop out the far end. So this is what you will get if you read the OpenGL specification, the Vulkan specification, um, and it really is, from the hardware point of view, a single pipeline all the way through. Um, the challenge of this is the working set is processing triangles in the order the application sends them in, and those triangles could be anywhere on screen. So the data size that you're working with for your frame buffer working set is the whole screen, and if you go back 10 years when we first start designing mobile GPUs, well, 20 years, I'm getting old, um, the, the size of memory you need there is just far too big to keep on chip. So you're going out to main memory, and for things like blending and depth testing, stencil testing, you get a, a lot of read, modify, write traffic. Um, and as we'll see, that may not be the right trade-off for all kinds of content. The nice thing with this architecture is if you look at how the, the hardware pipelines the work, so can you keep the GPU pipelines busy, you start off submitting draw calls from the application, that goes into geometry processing, and as soon as the first triangle hits that FIFO, you can start pulling it out and start fragment shading straight away. So you get quite tolerant behavior in terms of pipeline barriers, and it's a little bit more lenient on the application in terms of getting the best performance out of it. So in summary, you get less expensive triangles. They stay on chip, and you don't get the extra bandwidth. Um, and as my colleague in the next talk will talk about, bandwidth is really, really expensive. If for battery-powered devices, memory bandwidth is one of the main things you're optimizing for, not processing cycles. Um, the hardware is well aligned with the API pipeline in the specs, so it behaves reasonably consistently in terms of how you would expect that to work in practice. So it, it, there's less surprises there to, to try and trip you up. The challenge is more expensive pixels. We have that read, modify, write traffic, more memory bandwidth, and things that increase the number of samples that you need to keep in your frame buffers are prohibitively expensive. So there have been mobile GPUs, which have been immediate mode, and historically, they didn't even expose anti-aliasing. It was just way too expensive to be multi-sampling. For mobile, we want a different trade-off. Right? We have a lot of content that's very simple. Your phone UI, your browser, they're all GPU accelerated. And we want to give the best possible battery life for your kind of whole day user experience. And that needs to be as efficient as it can possibly be for that lighter, fragment heavy content where geometry is less of an issue. So can we do a different architecture that plays the trade off in favor of um, kind of pixel efficiency more than geometry efficiency? So we do that by splitting the screen into small tiles. We can process tiles on chip. They're small. They can fit inside RAMs. We can keep inside the, inside the GPU. However, to achieve this, we need to know up front which triangles contribute to which tiles. So we basically split the GPU pipeline in the stack into two pieces. For each image we create, we have to do the geometry processing first, at least partially, compute the, the output position so we can do binning, and then tile by tile, we'll read the triangles we need just for that tile, keep it in an on-chip tile RAM, and then we write that back out to main memory when the tile is actually finished. And that comes with a load of advantages. There's no extra spilling of memory traffic for fragment shading. It's always guaranteed to stay inside the GPU. Things that are transient, you may have stencil that you don't need to keep. We can just throw away. It never hits main memory at all. In terms of pipelining, because we split the pipeline into two separate pieces, it's a coarser schedule. So we're, we're now pipelining render passes, not draw calls. You have to go and process all of the geometry first to complete that tile list. And then that goes into your pixel processing to complete tile by tile. We'll go and write that data back out to memory. You can still get parallelization, but you're now parallelizing whole render passes, not draw calls. 
So in terms of application setup, especially for things like Vulkan, where you control the pipeline barriers, it's really important that you have reasonably relaxed barriers that let things overlap and run in parallel. Otherwise, you can leave a lot of performance on the table. So we get less expensive pixels. We can keep things on chip. We're very good at things that increase pixel density. So things like multi-sampling, we can store the extra samples on chip. We can resolve that back to the single sample we want to keep at the end of tile write back. The multi-sample data, again, never hits my memory at all. Um, but we're paying a trade-off here for geometry efficiency. So we have more expensive triangles. We're round tripping at least some data through main memory. And we have these stricter API requirements in terms of getting good parallelization and things overlapping and running in parallel. However, um, last year we announced Immortalis G720. This is the first of our ARM um, fifth generation GPUs. And the goal of this one is to try primarily to optimize that extra geometry bandwidth. So we now compute position up front, so we know positions, but we defer the full vertex shading until fragment shading time. So tile by tile, we're now completing the vertex shading to the triangles we need to keep, and we still get all the benefits of being tile-based in terms of on-chip memory. So this effectively gives you immediate mode vertex shading per tile, and minimizing the amount of intermediate traffic we're pushing back through main memory. And you know, can't name names, but there are re real games out there that are seeing you know, 40, 45 percent reductions in bandwidth per frame, just because they're reasonably geometry heavy and they're not having to have this extra round trip by memory. So, with advanced tile-based with ARM fifth generation GPUs, you get all the benefits of being tile-based. You get less efficient, pic uh, less expensive pixels. Um, we get less expensive triangles because now we can keep the bandwidth on chip during that deferred vertex shading phase. There will be some duplicate vertex processing. We have to process enough during binning and then reprocess a little bit later during the main phase. So very complicated vertex meshes can cause problems. Um, but we have uh, an even stricter API for, uh, for pipelining. So we're, because we're deferring vertex shading, your vertex stage dependencies on data in Vulkan get released later in time. So you can get extra dependencies cropping up. The good news is they're really uncommon in real content. So it's very rare that you're going to trip over problems here. One handy optimization hint is, and this is true for all the GPUs, not just, the, not just Mali uh, and not just the fifth generation GPUs, is looking at how you avoid redundant data fetch during that vertex shading phase. So here we have a model. And the very traditional way of passing in your vertex data is to pass in fully packed uh, vertex meshes. So you have an array of structures, and you're interleaving all of the vertex attributes that you need for those meshes. So position, tangents, normal, texture coordinates, uh, whatever other data you want to go and compute. When you're running on a tiler, nearly all tiler GPUs, again, not just ARM, um, will go and compute position first. And then even for good CPU side culling, half your triangles are going to get thrown away because they're back facing. So they're in frustrum, they're visible, they're just facing away from the camera. So half of the vertices you touch, even with perfect CPU culling, are redundant. And you don't want to fetch data you don't need if you're just going to throw them away. So we're going to fetch the position data. We're going to compute the position, put that through clipping and culling, then throw things away. If you've got fully interleaved meshes, we're going to fetch whole cache lines from memory, because that's how DRAM likes to be accessed. And if you fetch 16 bytes of position, you're also going to fetch all the other attributes as well. And you pollute your cache with non-position data that for the, those cold vertices you're never, ever going to touch or use. So it's just a waste of power, waste of bandwidth. So if for Tyler-based GPUs, it's really, really good to split your input data. So have a, have a tightly packed array of position data. That gives you perfect efficiency for position shading. You're not going to fetch redundant data that you don't need then have everything else tightly interleaved in its own separate buffer region. And then for the 50% that are still visible, you'll then go and fetch that data. But you're not fetching redundant data that you don't need. So key takeaways, so with the, the latest ARM fifth generation GPUs, we can give you both excellent fragment efficiency, which Tyler's are renowned for, but we can also give you really good geometry efficiency. This either is going to give you better battery life, or it lets you increase the primitive complexity in your games and push the, the kind of visual quality you can achieve. To get the good overlap that still matters, overlapping that geometry phase and the fragment shading phase, you want to make sure that if you're writing your own engine, make sure your Vulkan pipeline barriers are as relaxed as you can possibly make them. That gives you the, the best chance of getting parallelization across the different shader pipeline stages. 
Um, and to get the best memory bandwidth, uh, split the geometry we've just seen. So position tightly packed, non-position tightly packed. Don't fetch data that you're never going to use. For transient attachments in tile memory, if you don't need them, make sure you're using you know, store op, don't care, just discard them. Don't write them back to memory. It's a waste, again, it's a waste of bandwidth. And if you're doing things like multi-sampling, make sure you're using the inline resolve so it's happening as part of tile write back. Don't do a write out to memory of all your multi-sample data and then a separate transfer job to do the resolve. It's kind of the standard way of doing it on immediate mode, but it's horribly inefficient for a tiler. Hey, good to Finally, if you have a phone and want to take a photo of some URLs, um, we have lots of mobile game dev resources on our website. Everything from best practice guidelines for the APIs, uh, tooling guidelines for how to use our profilers and our debugging tools, lots of documentation around ARM best practice, um, onboarding <laughs> practical learning paths, and some training videos, it, sort of five minute quick intros into all of our dev tools. Um, we have a free suite of tools called ARM Performance Studio that covers everything from profiling to API debugging. Uh, we have some demos around the corner if you want to go and see that after these talks. Um, and I think 11 minutes, so uh, I better shut up. So. Thank you very much.